Honestly, that's just incredible to watch. And for most people, that seems kind of unattainable. But in this video, I'm gonna break down how Kadori does this and how you can learn to do this too without the debilitating knee pain that I'm sure you're imagining goes with doing something like that. So this how has three parts. First, biology. Kadori is not a big guy. He's about five foot four and 62 kgs. Here's me standing next to someone of similar proportions for comparison. His body proportions are ideal for doing this. The lighter you are, the less downward forces you generate. And the majority of Kadori's weight is centered around his lower legs, which is great because heavy torsos are, well, heavy and don't really help with load bearing. But being small is not enough to be able to do the things Kadori's doing. Second, he's thick with two C's. He has unbelievable glute size and functionality. The glutes are the largest and most efficient mechanism the body possesses for absorbing drops like this. Nothing else in the body can even come close to doing this job, especially not your quads alone, which is what many people try and do. The last factor is the most important one to focus on because it's the one we can actually change. And this is Kadori's position, where he is in space as he moves, the shapes he's making with his body. He just does this correct most of the time and things like his center of gravity are in the right place at the right time. He is incredibly and consistently upright through his upper spine. His head stays nicely on top of him. This is super important because as you collapse, as your head and neck bend down, the relative position in space makes them heavier. And as well as that, as you collapse into that shape, you disadvantage the muscular system that would support the position of them being up. His center of gravity is also perfectly positioned. He's as far forward in space as he can be while still maintaining balance. And this is super important because if you fall back into your landings at all, it looks something like this and you immediately start to lose the functionality of your posterior chain, your glutes and the muscles that you need to be doing the absorbing because as they get too far back in space, it gets harder and harder for them to work. And it just looks wrong when you see it and it's a total disaster for your knees. And sometimes that can even happen to Kadori. In this instance here, I think his weight travels back a little further than he was anticipating on this drop. And as a result, his normal landing pattern starts to break down. His further back weight meant his glute didn't get a chance to activate as well as he would. And without their support, the head and spine started to collapse more and this whole alternative pattern started to take over. And there really are two patterns here that we can think of. One being the good pattern and two being the bad pattern. And if you're not doing one, you're probably doing the other. And this probably didn't feel great on his body. And I doubt whether in a few years time he'll still be able to get away with this kind of thing. The last part of position is centrality, how symmetrically you move. We don't want things twisting relative to other things unnecessarily. We don't want one bit further forward or one bit further back or one bit further right or left. Ideally, everything would stack neatly on top of each other. Kadori tends to do really well in this most of the time, but when the forces get high, he has the tendency to allow his right hip to retract back a little bit and his weight to fall left a little bit. And because he's doing everything else so well, he can get away with this for now, but these minor rotational errors really do cause problems. See both my videos from Max and Drew for more details on this, but basically minor centrality errors like retraction and rotation at one hip, usually in conjunction with some torso stabilizing problems, it's just a killer for knees. So anyways, how do you go about doing this yourself? And given that gene therapy is currently unavailable, that leaves position and glutes. And interestingly, Kadori himself does not lift weights, but he has really developed glutes. And there are many athletes out there who lift a lot of weights who don't have anywhere near developed as glutes as him. The best way to develop this musculature is the same way Kadori did, through being in the right position in space. If you're in the wrong position, it makes it super hard to use the right muscles. For instance, if your weight is really, really far back, you're never gonna get your glutes working. If you're collapsing, your upper spine muscles have got no chance. There are three ways to go about doing this for yourself. First, understand what correct actually is. This narrative of everyone having their own way of doing things, yes, everybody is different, but biologically, there is still an ideal way of doing things. Using your glutes is always better than your quads. Staying central is always better than twisting. Collapsing is always worse than being upright. Look, understanding what the ideal is is the first step towards moving towards it. Second, when you understand that, start doing it all the time. There's no separation here between your sport and your real life. When you bend down to tie your shoes, are you squatting down, bending, twisting, collapsing with your weight back, or straight, upright, central, supported with your glutes? And lastly, we need to measure this in some way to check if we're on the right track. Three good metrics to use are muscle soreness, your performance, and video analysis. When we come back from training, which part of our body is hurting? This tells us what we've been using. If our quads hurt every time we come back from training, that suggests that's the only muscle we've really been using. When was the last time your glute muscles really ached? We want to come back from training with a sore butt in a good way. 
And as well as that, in terms of soreness, we want to pay attention to pain. Pain is the indication that we're doing something wrong. If you come back from training and your knees are hurting, it means you're doing something wrong. Listen to the communication your body is giving you. And as well as that, performance is really good to look at. This metric lets us know if we're getting better or not. And this is a really good indication if we're on the right track. If we're plateaued and not making any progress, it doesn't really matter what we think we're doing. Reality doesn't much care. You'll only get better if you're doing the right thing. Lastly, film yourself and look at yourself as objectively as you can. It's got to look different and feel different to be different. Otherwise, you're just going to get the, the same results. Basically, none of this is random. There are cause and effect relationships. Understand them and you can understand your pain and your performance, how to move better and be injured less. If you'd like to learn more about how to use your glutes, I'd recommend watching my How to Walk Properly video that I released recently. This covers glute usage in a lot more detail. Otherwise, cheers for watching, guys. I really appreciate the support. It really means a lot. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, subscribe, leave a comment and all that. Big shout out to Kadori for helping on this video. He answered heaps of questions and sent me footage. Give him a follow on Instagram if you haven't already. He's an incredible athlete. No new videos for a little while because I'm on holiday, but hopefully within the new year, we'll see. Cheers.